Hey everybody, my name is Jess from Sally Tomato and I'm here visiting Missouri Star Quilt Company to bring you another tutorial part of the travel series. So this bag is called the Traveler. It can be worn crossbody or as a fanny pack. It has all of the great features of a wallet and a travel bag combined. So here we have a nice front pocket for cell phone that I will show you how to make step by step. The front features an ID pocket, a slot for your passport, and there's a variety of pockets on the inside as well. So let's get started. So first we're going to add a little bit of shape to some of the pieces. So for those round corners, I like to add labels to each of my pieces so that way it's easy to just grab them as we go along. So I'm just going to remove those. And all of the pieces in the pattern are rotary cut so make sure to refer to the cutting instructions to cut out all of your pieces. And there are two templates that we're going to use right away. So to shape the corners, we're going to position the corner template A in each of the bottom corners. And you can just follow along that curved line to mark the corner. And I'm just going to flip it to trace and mark the other side. So then I'm going to take my scissors and just cut along that marked line on each side. So one piece is done and then we'll repeat for the remaining pieces A. And then also repeat for the lining pieces. And these, I'm just going to align all the edges and trace and cut both corners at once for each piece. All right, one more piece to shape the bottom corners. And this time we're gonna use the corner template A. So just the same process to round each of the bottom corners. So we can set these pieces aside and move on to create the ID pocket window. So grab piece C for the window pocket and I've already went ahead and marked the window opening on the wrong side. So look at your pattern for the measurements and you'll measure in from each side edge and mark a line and then we'll cut out this area here. So you can either use your rotary cutter, I'm just gonna use a scissors. So to get started, I'm just going to fold the pocket in half a little bit and make a snip. And then I'll cut along each of the lines. Right, so here's how it'll look and these edges will be left raw so there's no turning which is nice since we're using cork fabric so you'll want to use either cork or faux leather or another type of non-woven fabric 
and that way the edges will not fray, which is really nice and it makes it super easy. So we're going to attach our clear vinyl. So I've left the paper on so you can see it is a little bit smaller than the cork piece and that's intentional. So I'm gonna remove the paper now and place it against the wrong side. You'll wanna make sure that it's centered and then add some sewing clips. You do not want to use pins on cork or vinyl because they'll leave a permanent hole. And also these non-woven fabrics tend to be a little bit stiffer, so the clips are super nice. Now we're gonna top stitch an eighth inch from the inner edge of the window. And for any top stitching, I always like to lengthen the top stitch to about three millimeters long. get to a corner you can just lift the presser foot and pivot to sew along the next side. And I am top stitching with the clear vinyl against the feed dogs because that will help guide them through and then I wanted the cork fabric on top because then you can have that nice even top stitch from the window. So best practice is to take a hand sewing needle and to guide your thread tails to the back side or the underside. I'm just gonna trim them. So it's up to you if you wanna take the extra time to feed those to the wrong side. So then you wanna pick either side of the, either of the long edges to be the top edge and then top stitch an eighth inch from the top edge. Trim those up before we move along. And now we're ready to attach this and work on the passport pocket. All right, so to work on the passport pocket, you're going to measure down from the top edge on the wrong side of your passport pocket piece and mark a horizontal line. You'll measure down a second time and mark a second horizontal line. And then you'll also measure in from each side edge to mark the vertical line. So these lines will all create that box for the pocket opening. So grab your scissors and we're gonna cut out the box just like before with the window. And again, you could certainly use your rotary cutter if you want, just be really careful when you approach the corners. I'd cut close to the corners and then use the scissors to finish those off. So here's how it will look when you're all done cutting. And then you're gonna measure down from the top edge on the right side of the fabric and mark a horizontal line. And that'll be for the fold line and placement for the window pocket 
in the next step coming up. But first, before we do that, we're going to take the flap portion. And if you'd like, you can install a handmade label. So I've already marked the placement up from the bottom edge. And a handmade label just adds some extra touch to the front of your project. And it's fun to coordinate all of the hardware together. So I'm going to just simply bend the prongs so that way they're perpendicular to the hardware, just straight out. And then grab your washer that comes with the hardware. You'll want to see which holes that the prongs poke through. And then position your washer right above that placement mark, just centered within your piece. And mark those two slits. Then you'll take a seam ripper and just cut very carefully and slowly through your fabric, just about an eighth of an inch. You can always cut bigger, so if you need to. And then you're going to poke the prongs through from the right side to the wrong side through the slits. And then place the washer over the prongs. And I recommend to bend the prongs away from the center and that will just help spread out the bulk of the hardware. So here's how it looks installed, super simple and it doesn't take that many extra steps. All right, so now we're ready to attach the ID pocket window. So center this on your passport piece, about an eighth inch down from the marked line. And you can use some double-sided basting tape to hold this in place. So I'm gonna flip it over and just apply some to the long edges close to the window area. So to make it a little bit easier to get the paper off, I always recommend to use a pin and just score the paper. And then you can just bend your fabric and the paper comes right off. It's super easy. And make sure that you position the ID pocket window so the top stitching is closest to the marked line. So then at the machine, we'll top stitch an eighth inch from the sides and the bottom edges. Make sure to leave that top edge unsewn. So next we'll add the front of the flap. So you're gonna flip over the passport pocket piece and with wrong sides together, you're going to align the bottom edge and the side edges will be a little bit shorter and you wanna make sure that that handmade label is closest to that center marked line on the other side. So you can just clip this in place. So now we're gonna top stitch the pieces together, but we're gonna to top stitch from the side with the window pocket and we're gonna start and stop at that marked line. And so with an eighth inch seam allowance. Next, we're gonna install a little bit of hardware. So the kit comes with a pocket flip lock 
And this is just a small flip lock. So I'm going to open this up. So first we're going to install the eyelet piece. So there are two little screws on the back side. So grab a Phillips screwdriver and just unscrew to separate the two pieces. And these are very small, so just make sure that you don't lose track of them. So then you're going to take the screw unit half of the hardware, so this would just be the back piece, and center it over the placement for this piece of hardware. So you'll measure up from the bottom, and it's basically centered between the bottom edge of the window pocket and the bottom edge of the passport pocket. So we're going to just trace that inner part of the lock and then also those screw holes. And then what you want to do is draw an oval shape around the screw holes and about an eighth inch past that center oval to create this larger oval. And you can bring your screw plate back in place to make sure that it doesn't, the marked lines don't go past the hardware edges. And now I'm going to take this seam ripper and just get this oval started by just cutting a slit. And then take your scissors and make sure that you're cutting through all of the layers. And just follow along that outer largest oval marking. So then you're going to place that back plate over your oval that you just cut and you want the front plate against the other side. And you can double check that there is enough fabric cut away to be able to access those holes to screw the two pieces back together. And if you need to, you can always cut a little more. So you can cut on the conservative side first just to make sure that you don't cut away too much. And we can just screw the pieces back together. And I usually like to add a little bit of permanent glue between the two hardware pieces just to make sure everything stays secure. So you could use E6000 or any other permanent glue. So to attach this pocket to our front piece here, you're going to take one of your main fabric piece A and you're going to center the piece an inch and a quarter down. So you want to make sure that this top edge of the pocket stays straight and I'm going to apply a piece of the wonder tape along the top edge to secure this in place.
and then just press down to adhere the tape to the piece. And we're gonna top stitch an eighth inch from the sides along the very top edge and then also along that marked line. We're gonna follow along that line. So I'm just gonna start along the top edge to make sure that that stays straight. And it's always a good idea to backstitch. So now that the two pieces are attached, you can see this starting to come together. So what will end up happening is this lower part of the pocket will fold up and now we're going to install the other half of the flip lock. So just double check where your pocket lands to install the flip unit. So that way they both align. So mine lands right above the top edge of the pocket here. So very similar to the handmade label, you'll wanna make sure that those prongs are straight outwards and then align the prongs with the washer. And this time it's a little offset, so I'm gonna do the outer line and then the inner line on the other side. So just go ahead and mark those two slits. And take your seam ripper and cut each of the slits. And then poke the prongs through the slits and flip it over so the wrong side is face up. And then add the washer over the prongs and bend the prongs away from the center. And here is how the pocket functions when the lock is installed. So you can set this piece aside and we're going to work on the back slip pocket. All right, so grab your back pocket piece and we're going to install one half of the magnetic snap. So included with your magnetic snap is a washer and you're going to center the washer over the placement mark. So refer to the pattern for the measurement on how far down to install the snap. So I've measured it on and marked on the wrong side. So mark each of the slits on the washer And we're gonna repeat the same process as before. So we'll cut the slits. And take one half of the magnetic snap and you'll want to have the prongs go to the wrong side this time. And then center the washer over the prongs and bend away from the center. So here's how it should look. And then you're gonna take this small little accent piece and center it over the cork fabric against the right side. So you'll have right sides up of both of your pieces. And then we're going to top stitch an eighth inch from each of these edges to cover up the wrong side of the snap. So going along the curves, make sure to lift the presser foot and adjust as needed. Take your time. This is a really cute little detail and the top stitching really makes it pop.
Now we're going to finish off this top raw edge with a little bit of accent detail. So grab the back pocket accent and take some double sided basting tape and I'm going to apply it along the very top raw edge of the back pocket piece. And then score the paper with your pin to peel off the paper. And then you're going to align the long edge of the accent along the marked line on the pattern piece. So again, refer to the pattern and mark that horizontal line so you know where the placement is. And then we're just gonna flip this over to the wrong side and fold the accent in half. And you can use some clips to hold the other side in place. And I rather use the clips than more tape just to avoid having two layers of tape for your needle to sew through. You don't wanna gum up the needle. And I do like to use a Microtex needle for sewing through the faux leather and the cork fabric when we're getting through these multiple layers. It has a really nice professional looking stitch. So now that we have this aligned, you'll notice that the back side overhangs a little bit more and that's intentional just to make sure that we catch that accent piece. And we're gonna top stitch an eighth inch from the aligned raw edge. Here's how it turns out. I just love how this pocket looks. And then we can trim up our threads. So you can set this piece aside for the moment and then grab your back panel. And I've already went ahead and marked the placement for the other side of the magnetic stamp. So we're gonna repeat the same process to install the other half. And then take your back pocket piece and snap together the two halves. And then we're going to top stitch an eighth inch from the side and the bottom edges. Make sure to leave the top edge unsewn. So you can test it out and this pocket is great for cell phone, keys, other items that you want to access easily. So next we're going to attach the strap connectors on the sides. So you want to grab both of your pieces G and these are the strap connectors and then also your hardware kit. So I'm going to open this up and grab the two one inch D rings out from the kit. And then you can set the other hardware aside for the moment. So first we're going to top stitch an eighth inch from each long edge of each of the connectors and that'll add a little detail and strengthen the side edges of the fabric.
I'm just going to trim up these threads before we move along. It's nice just to trim them as you go, keep it nice and clean. So next you'll take one connector and one D-ring and you'll want the flat side of the hardware against the wrong side of the fabric and just feed the connector through the D-ring and then fold the connector in half and align those short raw edges. And then you'll position the connector according to the pattern, but basically it will be right in line with the top edge of the pocket will be that side raw edge of the connector. And then you'll want about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch of the ends to extend past the side edge of the fabric. You can add a sewing clip to hold the layers together and then repeat for the other side. And then we're going to stitch an eighth inch from the side edge of the back panel to secure each of the connectors in place. And definitely make sure to back stitch because you'll want this section to be very reinforced. So now that the front and back are all complete, we're going to work on the interior and we'll start with the interior card pockets. So first we're going to start with the card pockets, which are pieces I, and then we also have J, which will be for the bottom edge. And then I grabbed one of the lining panels. So first we're going to top stitch along the top indented edge of each of the card pockets with an eighth inch seam allowance. So I've already went ahead and marked the placement line for the first card pocket. So you'll just measure down from the top edge of the lining piece and mark a horizontal line across. And I'm going to center one of the pieces I, one of the card pocket pieces. You can use some basing tape to hold this lower bottom edge in place. I'm just going to hold it in place to make sure that the top edges are even and so with an eighth inch seam allowance just along the bottom edge. Then take another piece I and place it over the attached piece I and you're going to align the top edge of the card slot with the bottom edge of the previously attached card slot and the fabrics will nest together so that way the side edges remain flat and then we're going to top stitch an eighth inch from the next card slot along the bottom edge. So then we'll take our remaining card slot piece and align those edges again. Make sure that all the card slots are centered and nested together. And again, you can use some basting tape, but we're going to sew along that bottom edge again with an eighth inch seam allowance.
So at the side edge here, I'm gonna pivot and sew each of the side edges. So I'm gonna sew one and then return to the other side to sew the other. And I do like to backstitch where each of the pocket edges are aligned just to secure that even further in place. And then flip it around and repeat for the other side. So then we're going to sew from the bottom edge up through the center of the pockets and you can take your ruler and mark this with some chalk so that way you have a guide to follow. I'm just going to sew where the lowest part of the indent is. can trim up our threads again. So as you can see, this was a really simple technique to add six card slots to the lining of this bag. And you could certainly use these templates with other bag patterns and also install card pockets in a pattern that might not already have them. So it's a great way to use up those scraps and add that additional feature to your bag. So next we are going to add the interior zipper pocket to the remaining lining piece. So next we're gonna work on the interior zipper pocket. So grab your remaining lining piece, both of your zipper pocket linings and your zipper. And for this project, I'm going to use a size number three. You could certainly use a size number five as well, but I do like the size number threes for the interior pockets since this is a smaller bag. And number three refers to the width of the coil, which is three millimeters wide. And then the number three zippers also have a narrower tape than the traditional number five handbag zippers. So it's fun to try something a little different on the smaller bag. And also these zippers have a nylon coil, so you can cut and sew through the zipper coil. However, it does have that metallic finish, so it looks like metal and it coordinates beautifully with all the hardware. So you can set your zipper aside and take both of your zipper pocket lining pieces and press the bottom edge of each piece a half inch to the wrong side. And I've already gone ahead and done that on both of the pieces. Then you'll take one of your pieces and just like before for the passport opening on that pocket that we did out of the cork fabric or the faux leather, we're going to mark another placement box on one of the lining pieces. I've already went ahead and marked the placement box for the zipper on one of the lining pieces. So again, you'll just follow the pattern and measure down from the top edge and mark a horizontal line. Then you'll mark a second horizontal line and two vertical lines to complete the box. So again, all the measurements are in the pattern. So you'll take that marked piece and place it right sides together with that lining panel and you'll center the pocket lining over the bag lining and pin in place around the outer edges of the box. And you can just add a couple pins to hold the two pieces of fabric together. And then over at the machine, we're gonna top stitch along the box, just following along the marked lines. And for this step, I like to decrease the stitch length to two millimeters. It helps when we turn the pocket in the next step and it'll help going around those corners. So make sure that you start along one of the straight edges. Do not start on a corner.
So then you can remove those pins. And you'll take your scissors and we're gonna cut that slit along the center. So you'll, you'll wanna cut and stop about a half inch from that short edge of the box. And then you're gonna angle your scissors and cut up to each of the corners, but just be really careful that you don't cut through the stitches. And then we'll flip it over and cut the other half. So next we're gonna turn the pocket lining through this opening that we just created. And first I like to just finger press each of the edges to get it started. And then you can push the lining through. And arrange it in place on the other side. And you can use your fingers to help roll the seam to make sure that it's even. And I'm going to press this over at the iron and you can press one side of the, at a time. And just work your way around the entire box and arrange it the best you can. And I did accidentally press this bottom edge flat, so I'm just gonna refold that and press that again while I'm at the iron. Now we're ready to add the zipper. So grab your zipper and some double-sided basting tape and apply some pieces along the raw edges. So right along that edge. So I'm right-handed, so I always position my zippers to open to the right, but if you're left-handed, you'll want to turn the zipper around to have it open to the left. So position it what's comfortable for you. And then you'll center your fabric with the bag lining face up and the zipper face up. Just center it over your zipper and make sure that those side edges of the pocket lining are even with the raw edges of the zipper. And you'll want that coil to show through the opening. And just press down. And what's nice about the tape is if you need to readjust, you certainly can. And then we're gonna top stitch an eighth inch from the outer edges of the placement box. So you'll want to make sure to leave this zipper open and that is because we are going to be turning the bag right side out through the zipper pocket later on. So you can unzip the zipper and now we're going to attach the remaining half of the pocket lining. So you'll align all the edges, so the top, the sides, and then those bottom folded edges and we're going to start by sewing together the top edges of the pocket lining. So actually, I'm gonna flip this over 
So the right side of the lining is face up, so it's a little bit easier to work with. And you can certainly add some pins or clips. I'm just gonna keep this aligned and sew with a half inch seam allowance along the top. And then we're gonna sew the side edges of the pocket. So just make sure that those bottom folded edges stay even and the sides will be sewn with a quarter inch seam allowance. So you'll want to fold away that top layer of the lining so you're only sewing the pocket lining pieces together. turn it around and repeat for the other side. And this time I'm going to sew starting at the bottom edge. It's more comfortable to have the bulk of the piece off to the left hand side. So it's very important to leave this bottom edge unsewn and that to double check that your zipper is unzipped. So our zipper pocket is ready and we will move on to attaching the top zipper and assembling the bag. So next take your zipper that you're going to use for the closure and I recommend using a size number five so as you can see it is wider than the pocket lining zipper that we use so it's a little bit more heavy duty for the top closure. So we're going to finish off those raw ends and I already have my little tab pieces marked along the center. So you'll just measure in and draw a line down the center. So now I'm going to cut a couple small pieces of basting tape and apply them to just one side of each of the zipper tabs. Just like that and then you're going to align the raw edge of the zipper along that marked center line and then repeat for the other side. And at the machine we're going to baste the zipper in place with an eighth inch seam allowance. repeat for the other side. So then you're simply just going to fold the tab in half covering up that raw end of the zipper and then stitch an eighth inch from that raw long edge on both sides. Then you're going to grab your exterior front and the lining piece with the card slots and you're going to place the zipper right sides together with your exterior front piece and again you'll want to notice the direction of the zipper. So when you're wearing the bag and depending on which hand is your dominant hand you'll want the zipper to open towards your dominant hand. So I have mine positioned correctly for me and then we're going to clip it in place. 
along the top edge, making sure that it's centered. And to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to open up the pocket temporarily. And that gives me a little bit more room to attach the zipper. And then we're gonna sew with an eighth inch seam allowance just to tack this in place. Then take your lining panel and place it right sides together with the main fabric. So you're going to sandwich the zipper in between the layers and then make sure that the top and the sides are aligned and clip the layers together. Then sew across the entire top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, you're just going to fold the lining away from the zipper. And I recommend just finger pressing this, especially if you're using faux leather because you cannot iron faux leather. And then you're going to place the exterior and the lining wrong sides together. So the zipper is along the top edge and top stitch an eighth inch from the seam. Next, we'll attach the back exterior panel and the back lining panel. So this will be similar steps as we have just done. So you're going to take your zipper and align the opposite raw edge along the top edge of your back panel and sew them together with an eighth inch seam allowance. So just make sure that your side edges are also even. Then you'll take your lining and align it along the top edge and match up those side edges and sew across with a quarter inch. So then finger press the lining away and 
and the exterior back. And then top stitch an eighth inch from the seam. So now I'm going to close up that front pocket and place both of the main fabric pieces right sides together and both of the lining pieces right sides together. So make sure that your zipper pocket is against the lining sides and I'm going to clip all of the outer edges together making sure that everything stays even. You also want to align these top seams so that way the seam allowance is towards the exterior and it lays a little bit nicer that way. Also double check that your D-rings are towards the inside. So here's what it'll look like all clipped together on the front side and flipped over onto the back side. So we're going to sew the exterior pieces together with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. And then as we sew over the zipper seam, we're going to increase our seam allowance to a half inch wide. So just make sure that you keep your zipper pocket lining out of the way as we sew. And then we can turn our bag right side out. So we're almost there. And before we turn this right side out, we'll want to trim the lining seam allowance to a quarter inch wide to help reduce some of the bulk. So you can just roughly trim it so it's a little bit narrower. You don't want to cut too close to the stitches so it weakens your seam, so leave a little bit of a seam allowance. Okay, so then you're going to open up that unsewn edge of the zipper lining and turn your bag right side out through there. So you can unzip the other zipper. and then smooth out the corners. And before we completely smooth out the bag and put the lining inside, you'll want to grab that unsewn edge and align the folds. And I'm gonna add a couple clips to keep them even. And then just simply top stitch this opening closed with an eighth inch seam allowance. So then you can push the lining down into the pocket and then zip the pocket closed and put the lining down into the exterior. Then at the top corners you can just push out the zipper tabs. And 
And the reason why we sewed the lining with a little bit wider of a seam allowance was so that way it was a little bit smaller than the exterior and it fits nice and snug inside the bag. So the last step of the pattern is to make the adjustable strap. So grab the rest of your hardware and your adjustable strap fabric pieces and I'll show you how easy it is to make. I love using cork fabric and faux leather for straps because you don't have to add any additional interfacing. It's really lightweight and very durable. And what's great is you can leave the edges raw. So it makes the whole process of building the strap a lot easier. So you're gonna take each piece and place the ends right sides together, perpendicular to each other, and have the ends overlap by about a quarter of an inch. And then you're gonna sew from corner to corner to piece the pieces together at a diagonal line. Then you'll take your scissors and trim so that way the seam allowance is about a quarter of an inch. And then finger press the seam open and top stitch an eighth inch from each side of the seam. So that way it'll help keep that press flat and smooth down the bulk of the seam. Just going to fold the strap in half lengthwise, aligning those raw edges, and sew an eighth inch from each side, so along the raw edges, and then also from the folded edge along the entire length of the strap. You can certainly use some sewing clips to hold it together. I'm just going to align it as I sew. I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to about three and a half millimeters. And the last step is to add the hardware. So we're going to start with the slider buckle and have the slider buckle face up and thread the strap from the underside over that center bar back down the opposite side and then you'll want to fold the strap back onto itself. So that way the amount of fabric between the raw edge and the fold is about an inch and a quarter. And that gives you enough room to either sew a small box or two stitch lines to hold the strap together. And since we are working with a lot of layers here, sometimes I like to start in the middle of the strap and position the needle in the middle and then back stitch first and then sew forward. And that'll help prevent the strap from shifting. I'm gonna trim up these threads. And the underside of the strap has that raw edge. So I'm gonna put my thumb on the underside and run it all the way to the opposite end. And take one swivel hook and slide it over the free end of the strap so the flat side of the hardware is against the underside. Then you can slide the swivel hook closer to the slider buckle and make sure that the undersides are facing each other and then thread that free end of the strap back through the buckle. And you can double check that the strap isn't twisted at all. And then we'll add on that opposite swivel hook. So again, have that flat side against the underside of the strap and fold it back onto itself and top stitch. So 
So then you can grab your finished bag and clip each of the swivel hooks onto the D-rings. And your new travel bag is ready to use. I truly hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and learned lots of tips and new techniques along the way. Be sure to follow me for more inspiration and tips on cord fabric, faux leather, and all things bag making at Sally Tomato Patterns. If you do decide to make this project, we would love to see it. So share your finished bag with hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag MSQC Show and Tell. And until next time, have a wonderful day and happy sewing. Bye. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.